Good afternoon. Uh, we actually had some requests uh, since our previous post on how to winterize the trailer if uh, we would do an actual dewinterizing the trailer video. So we're going to go ahead and shoot that today. Uh, we're getting ready to take this out camping and it is uh, March now, early March, so hopefully not expecting any f more freezing weather uh, coming up in the meantime. So uh, we're going to do this. Uh, should be pretty quick. Doesn't take... Uh, as long or about the same amount of time um, to dewinterize as it did to winterize. So we'll go ahead and get started. All right, first thing we want to do here is uh, get the trailer pretty much leveled out or maybe slightly raked uh, to the rear. Uh, purpose that I, and, and this is the way that we do our dewinterization. You can see from our previous uh, winterization video, that's how we do our winterizations for the Outdoors RV 270 RKS. I like to slightly rake everything to the rear just slightly because at this point right here from here back is the plumbing so we have the bathroom here uh, and then everything water related is reversed from that so we don't have any water lines that go to the front at all so what we'll do is uh, our drain points are at the back low point drains uh, so what we're going to go ahead and do is now that we have the trailer uh, leveled out or slightly raked to the rear uh, we are going to get a large bucket, which we have here. And we're going to place this under the low point drains on the outside of the trailer. Carefully, you don't want to get any of this on the ground or around your pets, even though I think nowadays it's, uh, I think they're pet friendly nowadays. But it's always better to be safe. And there's our bottom of our low point drains. As you can see right here, there's a hot and cold right up there. So we just drop this right below uh, those two points. And we actually uh, saved our uh, empty antifreeze, RV antifreeze jugs from the winterization. So what we do is we just go ahead and pour it back into those jugs. And uh, we have a hazardous waste disposal uh, location maybe five or ten minutes from here and we just drop it off there we have the bucket under the low point drains we're going to go ahead and make our way inside the trailer uh, to the back of the trailer where we can open up the low points we're going to go inside the trailer here and open up some of the faucets uh, so when we do open the low point drain everything will uh, evac out and drain out of the uh, drains on the outside into the bucket. Yeah, we open the faucets there. We open these faucets. Come back into the kitchen. Got all the slides closed currently. The 270 RKS, the low point drain valves are under the sink. In this area here, uh, there's a back panel. We'll go ahead and pull that out. Uh, you can see what we're talking about. And the pump for reference, the water pump is under the bottom drawer uh, there. So you just pull the drawer out and then the water pump is there. Let's go ahead and pull this panel down. And you can see the pink line there. That's actually full of antifreeze. And right below it, right down there, is some insulation. Let's go ahead and remove that insulation. And you can see the uh, little valves down there. There's two. There's one there, and then there's one in front of it. And those actually will open the low point drains. Let's go ahead and make sure our sink's open here. All right, hot and cold both open on all of the interior uh, faucets. So let's go ahead and open these drains. There's two of them. And then we'll, we'll go outside and validate that it's pouring into the bucket. Yep, as you can see, falling into the bucket. Now let's go ahead and just let that drain for a bit. Actually, to assist this, what we can do is actually you can turn on the 
uh, water pump. It will give you some a lot better flow. All right, sometimes it's better with two people. You can communicate out the window to them. Uh, they can tell you when it stops, uh, the pink stops coming out, but we'll go ahead and turn on the water pump now. As you can see, it's coming out pretty good. Just want to get a good flush when there's no more pink coming out. And it looks like pretty much almost all the pink is gone. Have a little bit here. Get a little bit of uh, fresh water left in our holding tank. I'll go ahead and turn that off. All right, and when your bucket's getting close to full, we'll go ahead and just uh, turn off the low point drains here and then empty the buckets. As you can see, the lines are no longer pink. They're actually clear. Uh, good signs are there. Uh, so that goes to tell us that there's no more pink actually in those lines. Go ahead and close all of the, uh, the open lines here. Like I said, and this is the way that we actually dewinterize ours. You may have your own version or use portions of this uh, for your for your liking, but uh, this is how we do ours. So uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is add some more fresh water uh, to the holding tank. Or uh, you can actually hook up to city water, your choice. Uh, either one. Uh, the purpose of the difference is if you hook up to city water, it'll flush all your city lines that, that intake from, even though you probably don't have any antifreeze in those. It saves you from having to put water in the holding tank. But if you put water in the holding tank, you turn on the water pump. Uh, what happens is it'll it'll evac the lines from the water pump uh, out to the faucets. So, kind of kind of your choice to do both, uh, which is what I'm going to do uh, to do that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do each one hot and cold to get it flushed. Uh, for this, the toilet, the shower, the sink, and the outside faucet. Uh, and keep in mind, we still have not uh, returned the hot water tank bypass to normal position yet, because we still want that bypass until we're completely done. Then we'll rinse the hot water tank and then uh, we'll put the anode rod back in. It's going to fill up with about 20 gallons of water, 30 gallons of water, somewhere right in the middle, because uh, we're actually uh, taking it out. It is a full hookup uh, campsite, but it's going to be a couple hour drive down the interstate. Uh, so we're actually going to load it up with half full of water just for travel purposes, uh, so we don't get any additional sway. Uh, we did configure our weight distribution bars with uh, the tank uh, full, so we want to make sure we always have a little bit of weight in there. All right, what we're going to do here essentially is we're filling the holding tank uh, to get some water in there so we can utilize the uh, water pump and uh, flush those lines into the sink, the toilet, the shower, and the sink in the back. And that simply will just go into the gray holding tank and the black holding tank uh, for the toilet. Uh, and then those will get flushed on our next uh, next time we dump. The majority of the antifreeze is already gone. Uh, so we're just getting the last residual that's in the line uh, and flushing those out. All right, and while we're filling with fresh, which we've got a ways to go there, uh, we're gonna go ahead and just unscrew this bottom left panel, the vented one here, because the hot water tank is behind that panel. So go ahead and get those bolts taken out. And as we can see here, all of the lines are no longer pink. And the hot water is still on bypass and we're going to leave it there. It made a note on here, so it's easy to remember. And the, when the valve's in the down position, it's closed for winter. As you can see, it's in the down position. So we'll go ahead and uh, get this tank filled up a little bit, and then we'll go ahead and flush uh, all the lines internally with whatever's left until pink stops coming out. 
And just for reference, we don't drink any of the water in our trailer when we do fill it up uh, in our fresh water tank or the city water. We actually don't drink the water. Yes, we use it for the showers, the toilet, washing hands, washing dishes. But uh, for drinking water, we use bottled water. And for the dogs, we used uh, water jugs uh, from the store of fresh drinking water. All right, well, that is uh, filling up. We're probably pretty close up. It's probably just a little under halfway there still. So we're going to go ahead and turn on the water pump because we're going to first we're going to flush uh, with the water pump is we're going to flush the outside faucet. And that water pump will go ahead and prime up. All right, and then we'll go ahead and flush this one here. We got the bucket right below it. So we'll go ahead and flush the hot and the cold. And we'll go ahead and switch over to the hot. until no more pink's coming out. We'll go ahead and get the sink. This is just going into your holding tank, so it should be fine. And it's clear. And the hot water. toilet toilet is good and the shower All right, shower is good, toilet is good, sink is good, and back to the kitchen sinks. And we'll do the same back here. Hot. And cold. And those are good. So uh, now what we're going to do is uh, kind of simplify the process uh, for when we actually get to where we're going and we hook the trailer up. We're actually going to fill the hot water tank because uh, that takes a lot of water. I think ours is like a 8 or 10 gallon tank. And we don't want to pull it you know, if you're going dry camping, you don't necessarily want to pull it all from your holding tank. You want to make sure it's filled before you go. So that's why we reserve uh, to fill it with the city water connection. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So we're good. We're done with the water pump. So we're going to turn the water pump off. So water pump's off. And we're going to go outside and switch the hose up to the city connection now. All right. So we're going to go ahead and hook this up to city now. And we'll go ahead and turn it on. Right. Now we will repeat the process uh, with just making sure that uh, 
no more pinks coming out of all the faucets outside and inside. So it looks good. good by the way if you've never gotten one of these faucets this is the oxygenics oxygenics oxygenetics anyways i'll put a link in the description by far one of the best uh, upgrades for your trailer now we'll go ahead and get the toilet again come back here and get the last faucet All right, everything looks great. All right, so now let's go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and clean the hot water tank out. So back outside. All right, we have uh, one of these wands from Camco here. That actually is a hot water tank uh, rinser. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, use this here real quick. All right, as you can see the pressure on this, it's uh, pretty good. She's pretty far out there. So we'll use this to actually rinse out our uh, hot water tank here. As you can see, the anode rod is already out of it. Uh, we removed it when we winterized it, and we leave it out. So we just go ahead and rinse any of the sediment that's in there out. So just watch your feet when you turn it on. Just turn it around in there, up and down, and all around. See if it rinses any sediment out. Get a couple little pieces of anode rod that come out of there, little flakes. So we're going to let this drain. We're going to grab our anode rod. We're going to re-thread it with tape. We're going to reinsert it back in here. We're going to hook this back up to city water. And then uh, we're going to flip the bypass to the normal position and then fill the hot water heater. Okay, we got it hooked back up to fresh water, city water. And the anode rod looks good still. Uh, definitely, this is a new anode rod. Uh, second one I think we've had for the trailer. Uh, doing real good. Teflon tape actually looks pretty good too. I don't think we're going to need to redo it. So we'll go ahead and get the socket and we'll get this reinserted. All right, so we went in and got our socket. Uh, for ours, it is a one and one sixteenth inch uh, socket. And I had to label it with a gold sharpie, so we know exactly which one to use in the drawer. All right, I'll go ahead and get the anode rod placed back in here. I'm going to just start the threads. Yep, just start it, and. Should be good. Right, now that we've reconnected to city water and the anode rod is back in the hot water tank, we're going to go ahead and flip the bypass valve. And then again, this is returning it to its normal position. So go ahead and flip it up. Now that it's filling, we're going to open the vent. And we're simply going to wait until water comes out of the vent. Sometimes I'll come down here and open uh, the hot water. Just as such. So the hot water is open. It's venting, so as soon as it gets full, we'll close the vent. And then we'll go down there, close that, and then we'll turn off the hot water. And depending on your trailer, uh, depending on the size of the tank, this could take several, several minutes to fill up. So I think ours is a 
10 gallon hot water tank. So, and what we'll do is verify that, you know, nothing's leaking out of here. If we do see some uh, drips coming out of here, we'll drain the tank again and then put new Teflon tape. But uh, the Teflon tape looked pretty good. And these are the steps that we use to winterize our outdoors RV trailer. So uh, feel free to use these with if you have a different brand. Uh, grand design or they're all going to be pretty similar but do check your uh, owner's manual or recommended maintenance procedures uh, when it comes to your particular uh, make and model of trailer you want to verify that all your faucets inside the trailer are closed when you're doing this procedure otherwise uh, hot water whoop here it comes yep, so we're going to go ahead and uh, close that off should start coming out over here if we opened it, there we go. That's starting to come out. So we'll go ahead and shut that off. Now we know the hot water tank is completely full now. All right, we'll go ahead and open one of the valves again just to let the pressure out of the hose. And then uh, verify here that there is no leaks. Everything here looks real good. Nothing's leaking. Nothing's dripping from the threads, so that's good. Let a little pressure out of the line. So we can disconnect the hose without getting squirt. All right. Get the pressure out. That should be plenty good. Perhaps, yep, we're good. I'm gonna turn these back off again. All right, and that wraps up how to de-winterize your trailer. And again, this was for a 270 RKS Outdoors RV, uh, year 2019. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button and give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe.